Ram spent the night in Bardwaj's ashram. Getting up in the morning, they paid their respects to the sage and, taking leave of him, set out for the Chitrakoot hill. The holy man treated them affectionately, as if they were his own children, and sent them forth with his blessings, after explaining to them the way they should take through the forest. The three followed his instructions closely, and in due course came upon the river Kalindi. They constructed a raft with logs, bamboos, and creepers of the forest, and on it Lakshman made a seat for Sita with little twigs and leaves, on which she sat. The passage of the river was accomplished in safety. In midstream, Sita offered salutations to the river goddess and prayed that Ram might fulfill his vow and the three be enabled to return home safely. After crossing a few more streams, they came to a big banyan tree, which had been described by Bardwaj. And under this tree, Sita again offered prayers, saying, Grant, O holy tree, that my husband may complete his vow, and that I may see again the queens Kausalya and Sumitra. Ram asked Lakshman to walk in front, with Sita behind him, while he himself followed in the rear. Whatever flower or fruit she asks for on the way, Ram said, get it for her and keep her spirits up. As Sita went, she showed an eager curiosity, asking about forest trees and creepers, and was lost in admiration at the many-sided beauty of forest life. They greatly enjoyed the journey and rested for the night on the bank of a river. The following morning, Ram woke up Lakshman and said, Listen, the birds are singing to the morning sun. It is time for us to start. They performed their bathing and worship and resumed their journey in the path indicated by Bardwaj. The season was summer and the trees and plants were ablaze with multicolored flowers. The branches bowed under the weight of fruits and blossoms. Ram pointed out the beauty of the forest to Sita from time to time, saying as they walked, How beautiful is the forest, unspoiled by human interference. Look at the beehives hanging there. Look at the ground entirely covered with the fallen flowers. And listen to the birds, how beautifully they sing to one another and live in joy. Life would indeed be pleasant if we could always enjoy such sights and sounds. Then they saw at a distance the Chitrakoot Hill. They were glad and began to walk briskly towards it. How beautiful this region is, exclaimed Ram. The forest here has fine edible roots and fruits. The water is clear and sweet. Sages dwell in ashrams in this forest, and we may most certainly live happily here in their holy company. They proceeded to put up an ashram there for themselves. Lakshman was a clever workman. He soon constructed a strong hut, which was weatherproof and made it comfortable and convenient. Single-handed, he completed the mud hut with windows and doors, all made of bamboos and jungle material. Ram, his eyes filled with tears of joy, said, The flower-soft feet of the princess of Mithila have traversed the hard forest floor. If her feet have done a wonder, why, Lakshman, your hands too have wrought a miracle of house-building. I have seen today the gain that is in misfortune. Here, beside the lovely Chitrakoot Hill, on the bank of the river Malyavati, in that cottage, the three young people lived, free from care, performing their daily devotional routine. They forgot that they were in exile and spent the time happily, like Indra in heaven, surrounded by the gods. <laughs>